Hey, welcome into New York Knicks Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. We got some breaking news here on my off day, so not in the studio, but at the house. I actually just got back from watching Creed 3. Pretty good movie. News broke. The Knicks are signing center Moses Brown. And I just wanted to get to you guys a video, talk about the breaking news, because we pride ourselves on being first. And whether we're at the studio or at home, we're going to put out videos every single day on the latest Knicks news, as well as Knicks rumors. That's why you subscribe. Hit that sub button sub for videos every day on the latest Knicks news as well as Knicks rumors. I'm your host, Marshall Green. You're watching Knicks Now by Chat Sports. Reason for today's show, the New York Knicks are signing center Moses Brown to a two-way NBA contract. Brown averaged 4.6 points and 4.1 rebounds in 8.5 minutes per game for the Clippers this season. Brown entered the NBA in the 2019 season. He was actually the guy, if you remember, back when he played for UCLA, there was a video that went viral of him picking the chin up literally of his teammate. He was the guy that was picking the chin up. So a little bit of a viral sensation coming to the New York Knicks. And he's also from the area. He went to high school in Queens. So he's coming back to a spot that he's familiar with. The Knicks get to bring back a hometown kid. Like we said, he was drafted in 2019 by the Portland Trail Blazers. Been on a couple teams so far. Portland, OKC, Dallas, Cleveland, and Los Angeles. His best season in the NBA was his second year when he played for OKC. He started 32 games for the Thunder in 2020. He played in 43 games and he was getting 21 minutes per night where he was getting 8.6 points and nine rebounds. So the guy, seven foot two, he's a legit seven two big guy. Makes me wonder if the Knicks are maybe having an injury at the center spot. Uh, we've seen Isaiah Hartenstein somewhat deal with an Achilles injury all year long. Only played a little bit as well past couple of games. So maybe it's just depth, two-way contract. Maybe they're taking just a flyer on a kid that they think still has some juice left. 23 years old, still a young guy. Like we said, only been in the NBA for a couple of years. Made his debut in 2019. He was the 24th ranked recruit in 2018. What is his game? He's a guy that is really just your prototypical big. Like we said, he's seven foot two, not that good of a foul shooter, only 45% from the line this year with the Los Angeles Clippers. He doesn't shoot threes at all. He's really a guy that just hangs out in the paint, get your boards, um, decent shot blockers, never averaged over 1.1 blocks per game. Really hasn't played all that much though. In his NBA career, total games played in four seasons since being, or three seasons, 19, 20, 21, 22, four seasons since being drafted. He's only played in 126 games. So don't expect this guy to play a lot of minutes for the New York Knicks. I think this is just a depth signing, uh, low risk, some reward there. You don't really see a lot of seven foot two players really in the world. And right now, the Knicks, they just signed one as he was a free agent. Um, that's really all I got on Moses Brown. Not too much to share. Uh, going to be a bench guy. Going to be a depth piece. I don't expect him to play for the New York Knicks really at all this year. He's actually not eligible, I believe, to play in the playoffs since he was signed after March 1st and he played on a team earlier this year. Depth piece, going to be a guy that waves a towel and uh, is really your four-string center beside behind Isaiah Hartenstein and Jericho Sims with Mitchell Robinson, obviously, at your starter. I want to get everybody's one-word reaction in the comment section down below. Let me know, what is your one-word reaction to the New York Knicks signing the Queens kid, Moses Brown, to a two-way contract? Average four points and four bounds in eight minutes this game for the Clippers. Let me know what you think down in the comment section. And just remember, guys, this is why you subscribe. We don't only do watch parties. We don't only put out videos. We do it all. Videos every single day on the latest Knicks news and rumors. If breaking news happens, whether we're at the studio, whether we're at the crib, we're going to get you guys a video as soon as possible. So hit that sub button. We're inching closer and closer to 20,000 subs. Sub for Knicks dubs. Oh, just pretty still upset about yesterday's game. We'll close out today's video talking about last night's game against the Charlotte Hornets where the New York Knicks just fell short. As Julius Randle said, he ran out of gas. His team ran out of gas. And it's understandable, right? They've had really a lot of games played and not a lot of days recently. You had two big 
really crunch time wins over some of your rivals in the Boston Celtics and Miami Heat this past week. Double OT, a lot of guys played 45, 50 minutes in that game, quickly playing 55. And just nobody really had it on Tuesday night against the Charlotte Hornets. Um, I had a tweet that kind of blew up on Twitter a little bit. I said it was an embarrassing game for Julius Randle. I thought he pouted and moped and didn't really show much effort in the second half. And I finished it off by saying this is why a lot of people don't believe in him. Probably a little bit, you know, of me being overreactionary like I am sometimes. But I I went back and watched the game and I really felt kind of the same way. And it wasn't because Julius was missing shots. Like, that's going to happen. Steph Curry misses shot. You have uh, off nights. But everyone responded to me on saying they're tired. Well, my thing is, Julius, I know you want to be considered the tank and the engine and and the guy that never misses games. But I honestly think that last night, and I I want to preface with this, it's one game. Knicks are having a hell of a season. Julius has been great all year. But it's my job to talk about the games. And last night, I feel like Julius was the reason the New York Knicks lost. If he was tired, he was playing like he was tired. He was lazy on the glass. He was lazy on the defensive side of the ball. And I honestly felt like, despite Jalen Brunson not playing, the New York Knicks could have won last night if Randall just didn't play and Obi played 35 minutes. I felt like the way he was playing wasn't conducive to winning basketball. It felt like whenever R.J. Bear got hot in that first half, well, he had a bad second half. He was 9-13 at, at the half. But he kind of got phased out of the game. I felt like Randall just kept trying to take ISO shots and tough shots. And it's just like, dude, you've been great all year. You don't got it tonight. And that's okay. Just move the ball. Let others create. Quickly didn't play well. Really, the Knicks didn't play well at all in the second half. They blew a 16-point lead. The, the Hornets tied it up at that point and even took the lead, I believe. And then the Knicks got back up by 10 points, and they blew that lead. They just couldn't land that final haymaker as I still got Creed three in my head. Good movie. Um, Knicks just couldn't close the door. They couldn't land that knockout blow. They couldn't find a way to beat the Hornets. It snaps their nine-game winning streak, doesn't let them get to 10 games. And it's just unfortunate because, look, you played so hard, and winning streaks at the end of the day don't really matter, but that's one you want to win. You don't want to lose at home where you blow two double-digit leads in the same game to the Charlotte Hornets who came into that ball game with only 20 wins on the season. Um, It's not all Julius' fault. I thought he had a bad game. Um, I don't root against Julius Randle. Look, I get nothing out of rooting for Rand, uh, rooting against Randall. Like, what is that going to do for me? The channel does better, and, and, and when the vibes are higher, when the Knicks win. I root for Knicks wins. Um, I'm critical. It's my job. Um, I've been hard on RJ. I've been hard on Brunson. Uh, pause. <laughs> but, look, it's one game. Not the end of the world. You got the Kings tomorrow night on prime time. You got to win. Look, you're in, a, you're in a battle right now in the 4-5 and five seed with the Cleveland Cavaliers. You damn sure don't want to fall to the 6th seed to where you got to play either the Boston Celtics or the Philadelphia Sixers in round one. And if you end up the 5th seed, you're going to have to play game 7 in Cleveland instead of having a chance to be the 4th seed and play game 7 in Madison Square Garden if it got to that in round one. I still believe in this team. I think they're a good basketball team. and I think they're going to win the first series. Anything can happen in round two. Just wanted to get you guys a video, though, a little bit of breaking news. The Knicks are signing center Moses Brown, two-way NBA contract. Don't expect him to play too much, but wanted to get you guys a video on the latest news and rumors. I'm your host, Marshall Green. Appreciate you guys tuning in. If you enjoyed the breaking news video, even though we were at the crib, hit that thumbs up icon and like this video for me. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll be live on the channel for the game tomorrow night. Let's go Knicks!